There are so many great investors out there in the world. Some that have beat the market consistently for decades, some that lose $20 billion in a matter of days. I thought it would be interesting to take a look at all the greatest investors throughout history, comparing their stories so we can rank them in traditional tier list fashion. Everybody on this list is already legendary. This is just a relative comparison against one another. Now, some of you might be wondering, Ben, are you really qualified to rank these investors from F to S tier? You lose money consistently. Yes. Because getting to the top of the legendary investors tier list isn't about strategy or returns. Investing in general isn't about return. Ha! <laughs> Yet another joke that will ultimately be the downfall of this channel. Getting to the top of the legendary investors tier list is about your legacy. Who were you outside of the markets? How many years in prison did you serve? Wait, you lost how many billions? I'm not here to judge based on superficial things like your investment returns. I'm here to judge based on everything else. No one is safe on the legendary investors tier list. <laughs> He needs no introduction, alright? 20% annualized returns for half a century. Those returns, those returns cure cancer, okay? Those returns solve world hunger. This is the world if you had those returns. Humanity, living in peace and prosperity for all of eternity. Sound like a fantasy? It is. People like to think that Warren Buffett has had a positive impact on the investing community. But think about how many people now use Warren Buffett as the reason to try to actively manage a portfolio. Yeah, but Warren Buffett- Who gives a fuck? He's Warren Buffett. Yes, you there, YOLOing your student loans on short-term out-of-the-money options. You're not Warren Buff- Oh, n oh no, you're right. That is exactly what Warren Buffett did in his dorm room. He's actually so good at investing that he's single-handedly convinced millions of people that 20% annualized returns over five decades is possible. Warren Buffett telling you to invest in an index fund is like LeBron telling you that you're better off getting a computer science degree than pursuing your dreams in the NBA. Guess what? Neither of them stopped me. A little good little brush screen by Mario Chalmers. I'll just stick to reading balance sheets. Warren Buffett is at the top of the A tier. As an investing community, we need his story to have any chance of rationalizing spending thousands of hours doing this. Warren Buffett can be used in any scenario to justify what you're doing. But even most hedge funds can't beat the mark. Warren Buffett. The returns aren't even worth the hours you spend analyzing Warren Buffett. Warren Buffett. Ah, Benjamin Graham, the father of value investing. Graham developed his unique investment style in the wake of the Great Depression. Known for buying companies with a margin of safety between their intrinsic value and market price, Graham's stock picks provided downside protection with potential for upside growth. His strategy is also the inspiration for Benjamin of YouTube, known for buying companies with no margin of safety, no downside protection, and little potential for upside growth. Yeah, I don't, I don't really know how they relate. Graham describes an investment operation as one which, upon thorough analysis, promises safety of principle and an adequate return. In the 21st century, we've loosely adapted this to mean buy 20% out of the money options with no intrinsic value that lose 10% of their value every day on autopilot due to theta decay. It's essentially the same thing. A lot of people don't know this, but Graham was also the first to develop the idea of swaps. Swapping your wife out so you can hook up with your secretary full time. Now, Benjamin Graham was one of Warren Buffett's biggest inspirations. He's written numerous very influential books with investing principles that transcend time. He's made great returns. But in order to get to the top of this list, you have to do something weird. Everyone on this list has made great returns. Benjamin Graham is in the C tier. Legendary investor, no doubt, but outside of hooking up with his secretary, I feel like there's no real story here. Part of that is because there was less documentation when he was around, which is a disadvantage. His ideas have influenced a lot of other people on this list. All of that is great and demonstrates his investing brilliance, but he's just your average middle-of-the-road brilliant investor. Graham is in the C tier, a good benchmark for the rest of the degenerates on this list. We all know Bill, his overwhelming generosity, his humble lifestyle, and above all else, his uncanny ability to leverage to the absolute tits in risky over-the-counter derivatives. 
Bill is, was one of the greatest investors to ever do it. From 2000 to 2008, he turned 25 million into almost $5 billion in his fund, Tiger Asia Management. That's a 20,000% return in eight years. The fund imploded during 2008, teaching Bill an important lesson. If I wanna build a fortune sustainably, I need to protect myself against unpredictable events. Why not acquire as much leverage as possible to ensure that a tragedy like this can never happen again? The idea was brilliant. Instead of of changing the strategy that destroyed a fortune, why not use this same strategy because it's fun? After being banned from Hong Kong and other Asian markets, Bill decided to venture to the US so he could seek part-time employment at Wendy's. In 2014, Bill founded his next fund, Archegos Capital Management. Archegos is a Greek word that means he who takes the way. And apparently, the way is getting jacked to the tits in total return swaps, making $20 billion in six years, then losing all of it in a matter of days. Bill now has a full-time position at Wendy's. With all that being said, Bill of course seems to be a very respectable degenerate who's given tens of millions to charity, taken on obscene risk in legendary fashion, and made absolutely insane returns. Temporarily. Bill wins his place on the S tier. His contributions as a character on the Benjamin channel alone are enough to win him that spot. I wasn't gonna put this on here, but if you look up greatest investors of all time, um, Bernie Madoff, you guys know, ran the biggest Ponzi scheme of all time. $65 billion over multiple decades before the whole thing imploded. For example, when Madoff determined a customer's returns. Just another day in the Madoff investment fund, what returns should we give our investors today? For those of you who don't know, a Ponzi scheme works by new investor money coming in to pay off the returns of the previous investors. So theoretically, as long as there are new investors coming in, the seemingly good returns can continue forever. Okay, so this is Madoff's return benchmarked against the S&P. As you can see, it is literally a straight line, which is just... <laughs> So fucking ridiculous when you actually think about it. If you see a graph like this, it's a Ponzi scheme. Two decades this thing was running, and not one time someone thought to say, you guys, you guys think it's kind of unrealistic that we haven't had one day of volatility in 15 years? Yeah, maybe tomorrow. We just spun another 2% on the wheel, so probably just gonna stick with that for today. Bernie Madoff, despite everything he's done, does show us the power of investing. Investing in Photoshop so you can fabricate Robin Hood screenshots to convince your friends and family that the thousands of dollars you deposit into Robin Hood aren't evaporating. Alright, the only reason he's on this list is as a reminder of how absolutely fucking stupid people can be whenever they hear completely outlandish promises about making the money. This is an invaluable lesson that we can all learn, especially with the internet. And for that, Bernie Madoff is F tier still. Ah, Martin Shkreli controversial one. If you don't understand the whole lore surrounding Shkreli, I made a video a few months ago talking about it. Shkreli is in federal prison. This is a large boost for his legendary status. He's also had a big impact on the retail degenerate investing community. Less of a widespread impact as somebody like Buffett or Graham, but his direct community involvement has been a lot more impactful on the individual level. Shkreli's investment strategy revolved around shorting biotech companies. Biotech tends to attract a lot of risk-taking investors because it has big binary events that will either make or break the share price. Specifically, Shkreli would try to look at a biotech company during the clinical trial phase so we could determine whether the company was bound to fail. Being that new biotech companies' futures are entirely reliant on passing these clinical trials, there are a ripe opportunity for short sellers to print money in the event that they fail. There's a reason you always see small biotech company's charts that look like this. As you can imagine, it didn't take long for this strategy to implode. This is a hard one. Shkreli arguably has the best story of anyone on this list. The prison sentence is huge in boosting his legendary status. He's not S tier yet. He still has time to become S tier once he gets out of prison, but for now, Shkreli is B tier. He's a legend for his connection with Wall Street bets, but he hasn't had as widespread of an impact as some of the others on this list. The fabled big short degenerate. 
Now, if you've had a movie made about you, you're automatically going to be up in this territory. Michael Burry is widely known for using credit default swaps to short the housing market during 2008. One guy predicting the downfall of civilization while everyone thinks he's crazy, only to go on and make 100% returns in a year. The most classic investor legend origin story. Burry claims that his investment strategy is 100% based on Benjamin Graham's idea of a margin of safety, determining a company's intrinsic value than buying the company at a price below that intrinsic value. But Burry's also done some risky shorting that doesn't adhere closely to Benjamin Graham's ideas. As far as who has made the coolest trades on this list, it's definitely Burry. Shkreli is a close second, but his strategy is just too prone to destruction. Burry is A tier. Solid investor, made some crazy trades, there's a movie about him, A tier. <laughs> Now, you all might be thinking, there's no argument to be made here, but we are going to have to give this one an objective look. A lot of you might not know who this is, but I'm guessing most of you have heard of the Medallion Fund at some point. Renaissance Technologies is a quant hedge fund that was founded in 1982 by Jim Simons. The most famous branch of Renaissance is the Medallion Fund, known for returning an average of 66% annually for decades. What's even more incredible is that the people running the fund knew almost nothing about business and instead used purely quantitative models to achieve the massive return. The Medallion Fund's returns are absolutely insane, especially when you consider that even in these massive market downturns, they still made money. It seems like a trend with a lot of these great investors is that they outperform for a few years during bull markets build a small fortune, and then the entire thing implodes in a matter of weeks. The only way to generate these kinds of returns is to have some kind of absolutely autistic quantitative strategy that exists outside the normal business cycles. The Medallion Fund is kind of mystical. It's like an investing urban legend. Jim Simons is A tier. Because so many things about the Medallion Fund are unknown, he can't be above Buffett and Burry, but the fund does definitely have a legendary story. There we have it. From sickening financial losses to 60% annualized gains, there's been plenty of Wall Street legends that have influenced our strategies for decades. What's one common trait between most of them? Having at least one account that implodes violently, resulting in massive financial losses. Turns out we're not that different.